Well, unfortunately, as we all know from time to time, life can really suck. And part of that is because death is very much a part of and a reality of life. Death sucks. Thankfully, if you're watching this, you haven't died yet. And if you have, I would love to interview you because, man, that would make for a hell of a story. But nonetheless, part of life is death. We can run from it, we can try to hide from it, we can try and avoid it, but the reality is it's going to catch us all at some point in time. And we especially know, all of us, as wrestling fans, in some way or capacity, that this is an especially painful reality at times. Because we have seen more than our fair share of death over the years. From wrestlers we liked, wrestlers we loved, wrestlers we didn't like. All the same. It's like the one constant sometimes you feel like as a wrestling fan, especially when you get on the internet and you get on social media, is you're wondering if today is the day you're going to find out that somebody died. I hate to sound so morbid about it, but if you think about it, it's not that crazy to say. And especially when you see a name of a wrestler trending and it's out of the blue, the first reaction is, oh my God, did they die? Please say it isn't so. So in my limited amount of free time during this week, I got on social media during a break at work and I saw Jim Neidhart, Jim Neanville Neidhart's name trending on Twitter. And instantly I knew. I got that sinking pit feeling in my stomach. I'm like, oh hell, he's either on death's door or he has already passed away. And sadly, you click and you find out the reason he's trending is because he did pass away. I believe it was at the age of 62. If I have the age wrong, please forgive me. Not my intention to slight the man whatsoever. Dad just sucks. He just recently had the deaths of Nikolai Volkov and Brian Christopher and Brickhouse Brown. You look at recent years we've lost during this decade. Guys such as the Macho Man Randy Savage and the Ultimate Warrior and Roddy Roddy Piper and Dusty Rhodes. We've lost some true titans of the industry, some real wrestling giants, if you will, by force of their talent, their charisma, their performances, their personalities. It's been a rough decade. Kind of as a wrestling fan, combined with the decline in the overall product, in my opinion, and the number of things that have changed, and most especially the number of people that we lost, feels like the whole decade of the 2010s can go fuck itself. But anyways, you know, when I think of Jim the Anvil Nightheart, this is what I do. Really. I think about Jim the Anvil Nightheart and I smile, and I've said that about other guys that have passed, but not necessarily every guy, but he is most certainly one of them. You know, I think back to the glory days of old of professional wrestling for me, the 80s and the WWF global expansion and all of this, and, you know, don't fault me. It's how I got into wrestling. It's when I started watching wrestling. It's the guys like Anvil and so many others that helped me discover this great art form, this great genre of entertainment that is the wacky world of professional wrestling. And whenever I think about him, I just would always smile. I always think about him sitting there rubbing his goatee, being like, man, I wonder someday if I could grow a goatee like that, knowing that puberty was kind to me in some places and unfortunately not in others. He would sit there, and you had this great tag team with the mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, Brett the Hitman Hart, Jim the Anvil Night Hart, the Hart Foundation. Like those guys as a tag team were freaking incredible. Brett, the serious tactician, the excellence of execution. And in a lot of ways, he truly was. But he was this button down, reserved, quiet performer and person. You got the mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, who had this great ability to get under your skin and be grating and be annoying and just kind of grind your gears and chap your ass and feel like you wanted to sit there and pay money to see him and his team get the shit kicked out of him. 
That's the greatness of the mouth of the self. Jimmy Hart as a manager is he could get that heat upon him and it would transfer to his teams. And then you had the anvil, this big kind of bulky, hulking powerhouse of a dude, shorter, squattier, but a man. And I'm sorry, but when you look at like what wrestling has become and you feel like sometimes, hey, what are we missing? Sometimes it feels like we're missing men that are actually men, that you look at it and you're like, that's a dude right there. That's a dude I could believe in. That's a dude that I wouldn't trifle with. That's a dude I wouldn't mess with. That's a dude that if I got a little too snockered at the bar and I went up to him and I tried to start something, the dude would rattle my freaking cages and I would never, ever make that mistake again. Like we always have known wrestling is fake, scripted, predetermined, whatever the hell label you want to put upon it. But still to me, the genius of it is when you can suspend people's disbelief and make them believe in it. Even with the fake phony crap that happens within it, the unrealistic stuff that happens. Getting people to buy in, getting people to escape reality, getting them to believe. And when you saw somebody like a Jim the Anvil Neidhart, he was the type of guy that you could believe in. You believed he was a strong powerhouse because he was. You believed he was a badass because he was. You believed that he could really damage somebody in the ring if he wanted to because he could. When I think of all those years of the Heart Foundation, like for me as a wrestling fan, I've always loved tag team wrestling because there are just things you can do in tag team wrestling that you can't even imagine to do in singles wrestling, even if you're talking about the main event with the two biggest stars in the industry or even the two biggest stars of all time. The dynamics of tag team wrestling are so unique and so different and it always offers that potential of something different and something fresh and something new. Even if you've seen the act for years and you get to the comeback, you get to this, you get to the heat, you get to all of this. You know, and I think about guys like the Hart Foundation, man, and they were a part of my childhood. And I think about just how great they were as a team and they truly were a team. They felt like a team. Like the family by marriage, here's Anvil. He sat there and came up the hard way like so many guys did during that time. He put in his time, he paid his dues, and he eventually got something, got a shtick, got a gimmick, got something to sink his teeth into, and he did. And he became a star. And make no mistake about it, while certainly he's not Brett the Hitman Hart, certainly he's not Shawn Michaels, certainly he's not this guy or that guy, so many of those guys in the 80s and early 90s became household names and huge stars. To where even if you didn't know the name, you recognize the face still to this day and you know who they were. And when I was talking to people at work after I found out about it, several people who haven't, again, watched wrestling in years, remembered exactly who the hell Jim the Anvil Nidart was. And if they didn't, as soon as I showed him a picture, they said, oh, yeah, I remember that dude. He used to sit there and laugh <laughs> and do all this. He made an impact. He was memorable. You don't have to be in the main event. You don't have to be The Rock. You don't have to be Stone Cold. You don't have to be Hogan or Savage or any number of guys. You don't have to be seven foot, 500 pounds like Andre the Giant to make a statement be memorable, make an impact, and leave your mark. And his mark still is on the business to this day with his daughter, Natalia, who is a long-running member of the WWE roster. And, you know, it's always been cool to me to see the Anvil's legacy kind of live on through her, even if it always hasn't been the best or how it should have been. He's always struck me as a decent family dude, or at least... A, a good father. I know he had some of his issues and some of his challenges with some demons later on in his life. But damn, man. Dude made it to his early 60s. There are a lot of people that aren't even wrestlers that only wish they could have made it as long as Jim the Anvil Neidhart did and lived the type of life and the quality of life that he did. And I will always respect people that take something and make the most out of it they possibly can. That take what you might view as a dream and they pursue it and they chase it. And most importantly of all, not only having the courage of conviction to continue to pursue it, even when the logic indicates that you should stop, but then to actually see people kind of scale the summit or get to the mountaintop and achieve their dream is truly fantastic. 
So it's yet another example to me. And I, I, I see the pictures over the past couple of days that people post on social media of Team Canada and that version of the Heart Foundation, if you will, from 1997, which I've always talked about is one of my greatest factions of all time, is one of my greatest favorite years of professional wrestling of all time. And frankly, I love 97 as much as any year in WWF slash E history because of the evolution and change that you could see take place from the Royal Rumble in San Antonio in January all the way up to Survivor Series in Montreal in November and right after that. 97 laid the foundation for everything. So... I have so many good memories from wrestling over the years from a variety of different people. And the fact is the Anvil was a part of several of them at two different stages of his career, at two different stages of my life as a wrestling fan. So I hope wherever he's at, he's able to rest easy. He's able to find his peace. I know a lot of other people, you know, were Anvil fans too. And it's, again, it's a perfect example of you don't have to be the dude to be a dude that makes an impact and who people will truly remember. And every time, for now in perpetuity, whenever I think about Jim the Anvil Nightheart, I will always smile. And I will always be thankful for that. Because in a world full of reasons to frown and have sorrow, it's nice to have some positive memories in there. And thank you, Anvil, for all the positive memories you gave me over.